We got a lot to do in preparation for Jinshi's banner, so let's lock in and see how this chapter of my journey went. First the alloy smelt event. You have 2 minutes to kill as many enemies as possible. They always show a target amount of points in the left hand corner for the asteroid rewards. That's all that matters. If you hadn't noticed before, my damage output is complete ass. Yeah, in the second stage it was already struggling for points. Looking back it was definitely for a number of reasons. My cruise wing echo was good for sustain but that's it. I had some echoes equipped but I didn't max them because I am a hoarder and I was waiting until I got some decent purple rarity drops. I do believe I could have done better if I came back later a few days before the event ended after I upgraded my characters more but it's whatever. Since my damage wasn't enough I used the trial versions of GN and Mortify when available. Both had echoes that improved damage output. I did get the points but I had not not trained myself to dodge more and not face tank every attack. I learned the hard way that using the echo ability doesn't give you iframes, which is annoying. I luckily killed the mage here with my Gian ultimate so that I was able to clear this wave and then run away until time ran out. Granted, I could have just died since it doesn't affect your score. Other than that, this event was very tedious because they repeated the same enemy lineups over and over again. The ones with easy lineups I used my own characters for. Alright, I got Kamikaze. That's a new one. Next event was Weathering Exploration. You get a couple of objectives every day for survey points and after you get 140, we get 800 asteroids to our savings. This is epic. I played Yinlin's story quest. Only noteworthy moment was this clip of Jian switching and bouncing into the ceiling for some reason. I don't know why he did that. Our next source of asteroid scraps is working on our data bank. Specifically, I gotta hunt down all the ones I haven't unlocked a purple rarity for to help speed up the process Wasaju joined me once again using his totally legal character. I did say as a joke in part 2, Rover has honorary dragon status. Finally got a purple rocksteady guardian. You need to understand, this one enemy and its echo was such a meme on my account. I would get either blue or just no drop at all when Wasaju and I farmed together. Most of the echoes I needed were the open world bosses, since I've only farmed 2 so far. I had a much easier time getting getting those since there is an increased chance for enhanced drops up to 15 per week. After an hour the last two were Mech Abomination and Dreamless. I don't know why the Mech Abomination doesn't spawn in co-op but you already know I can fight this boss just fine. Dreamless was okay only because I picked the lowest difficulty. If it didn't drop purple after the first time I would have kept going up in level until I either got it or just couldn't beat the fight. Now I have every purple rarity echo in the game. Unfortunately it's not not enough XP for data bank 15 which is when I can start getting some gold rarity drops. So I had two options, use resources on rover just to complete the milestone because it offers data bank XP as well or I finally fight some of the red aura elite enemies. Of course, I picked the harder option. By self honor rules, my friend was not allowed to intervene, just painfully watch me die over and over again and taunt me by saying, with this sacred treasure I summon. It was after the third time of dying I came to realize this is doable but it's going to take so long because the best way to deal with this enemy is Mortify. I can keep my distance, avoid his charge attacks that have really dumb hitboxes and take advantage of the mechanic where every time I dodge and counter attack it does a set amount of damage based on the enemy max HP. I also had a few revives saved and continued to heal with the cruise wing even though I get one shot at anyway. I should point out Jian can also do the counter attack but the timing is tighter assuming I don't have to dodge an immediate second attack. Again look how fast and ridiculous the bear hug move is. The range is insane. Alright, that one was just me being awful. 
a momentary set. Oh, come on! That's not fair. I still went in with Jian when his school cooldown was done, since the bear does have some end lag between certain moves. Bit by bit, using up all my revives, the Spearback King was finally defeated. You know what the worst part is? This is the easiest of the level 120 bosses. For the Twin Herons, the good news is you only have to beat one of them. Yeah, it can't be that hard. My second run, I felt I had a rhythm going. I managed to get them separated after like five minutes. A decent chunk of their HP gone, and then I got wrecked. All right, let's try one at a slightly lower level. The nice thing about this fight is that some of their attacks don't one-shot me. On the flip side, holy, this is so much worse. They just don't stop spamming projectiles, and the Tic Tac wants to devour me like I'm a five-course meal. My rage. A momentary setback. Seriously, it doesn't matter who I lock onto, I eventually run out of stamina from the constant dodging. I went back to the herons and learned they have a counter. How else can I explain how I just died? Yeah, I was getting tilted. I can only blame myself. It's not impossible, but I don't think it's healthy for me to do these elite fights one after the other on the same day. Like before, it's best if I use Mortify so I don't get countered to death, but if he dies, it's over for me. Yes, I can dodge the counter if I time it right, but then no matter what, his twin decides to pull up and double team me. How did Musashi do this with just Rover? I have to give him more respect because this is such an endurance test of pain. Patience. Luckily, Wasaju pulled through and found a fight that was easier for me. At least the Rose Shrooms can't move. You only have to kill one, but I don't know. The masochist in me said murder both. They weren't hard. I was just at my limit that day and thankfully got Data Bank 15. No more of that for a few days. I finally did Ascension Quest 2 so I could upgrade my characters further. I also did the tutorials for each character I own for Asteroid Scraps. I enlisted Wasaju's help once more with farming and leveled up GN, Mortify, and their weapons to level 70. We also farmed Velborn since I'll need its mats later down the line. And I died when I was looking at stuff on my second monitor. Next, the Tacit Field Double Drops event. Perfect timing since I'm finally equipping and leveling up the good echoes I have. I hate the one where it drops arrow echoes because of the constant stupid lightning. Why am I getting Inazumad? All things considered with the amount of dumb RNG that goes into echo farming, I think I got some decent pieces. My stats are passable. Next day I farmed a different tacit field to get moonlit clouds echoes for Mortify. A quick status check of our savings for Jinshi. Looking pretty good. I finished equipping and maxing ones for Mortify. Well, I may as well use the remaining double drops for Spectro Echoes. Gotta love not getting the correct element damage bonus on the correct set. Oh, even better. Correct stat, wrong set. I love Relic System so much. I think because I was getting gold rarity from the Tacid Fields, I managed to passively hit Data Bank 18, so that's neat. There's only one thing left to do, more exploration grind. After an hour and 20 minutes, Jiensho City is 100% done. The closest I came to dying during the open world was the Shadow of the Past quest because it was my first time I fought the Ice Boss. After two hours, we are at 99% for Tiger Maw. You wanna know why? Because some genius at Curl Games thought it was a great idea to have the fabled Magnetic Cube Mechanics War Quest split into multiple parts and each part unlocked after 24 hours in real time. There's only two of these quests in the game so far, so I have to question why they did this. Today is the day, version 1.1 in the Act 7 story. I think Curl Games has stepped up their storytelling. They had a rough start for sure, but I think they are making serious efforts to improve, and I appreciate that. Anyway, the Jue fight. I don't have much to say, it's not meant to be hard, so I was just invested in the spectacle and the build up leading to it. I thought it was going to be a little rough if Jue had Spectro Resistance. Jinshi can hover over some of Jue's attacks, which is nice. Please, this is all we need. This is all we need. Alright chat, come on, let's hype, our let's hype ourselves up. We're gonna win the 50-50, right chat? 
I'm also at like zero pity chat, so I'll just let you know now. All right, we don't we don't care about four stars, so it's not gold. We skip. Come on. All right, sixty. Okay, okay, gold, please, 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 please. Okay, one at a time. Okay, that scared me. That scared me. Come on. Come on, please. Please. No! Get the f*** out of my chat, Aaron. Come on, please be... I knew my insanely luckily GN reroll would be balanced by a heavy loss eventually. Despite this, I have plenty of time to get her and the weapon. After the stream I recounted, I'm now at 62 pity. So with the free 10 roll we're getting, because the devs are goaded, I can prioritize my asteroids towards the weapon banner. Back to the exploration grind, starting with the last supply chest in Tiger's Maw. I haven't been back to the Tower of Adversity in a month. Floors 3 and 4 of the Stable Zone Tower were quick since I was overleveled. Now we have the Experiment Zone with the Resonant and Echoing Towers. The reason I haven't bothered with this content until now is because of the Vigor system. I understand why it's here, but that doesn't make me hate it any less. Basically, each character has 10 stamina across all the towers. Each stage goes up by one stamina for how much it costs. So you really have to plan out what teams you want to use. To clear as much as I can, I split up Gien and Mortify. I tried to save Gien for fights where there were a lot of enemies you can group up with his ultimate, while Mortify just brute force his way through one at a time. Floor 4 is where I realized two things. One, I really should get Mortify a fire set if I'm going to be using him as a DPS. And two, I don't have a lot of experience fighting Thundering Memphis. Yeah, I fought him in the overworld and story, but this one is definitely on another level. I'm gonna have to do some studying on his moveset if I'm going to fight him properly. Even then, my damage output is pretty low for this. I don't think you're supposed to try and solo this fight to be honest. Luckily, the first three stages of the Echoing Tower were manageable. The first attempt of Floor 4 was going fine until the enemy healed itself to full right in front of me for no reason. First wave is pretty easy using G and Ultimate to group at least three of the enemies and get the prisms out of here. The Herons can get juggled so hard by G and's basic attacks, which is funny to me because this has never happened in the overworld. Second wave is Mooring Angst, which I was so close to beating. I made a lot of mistakes that added up. Third attempt, I took zero damage in the first wave. I need every bit of HP for this. I figured out the strategy was to try and avoid being in front of it as much as you can. I'd only have to worry about the laser move and the occasional swipe attack, which are dodgeable. It's also becoming very obvious to me how important it is to perfect parry these bosses at the higher level. Definitely gonna need a serious training arc later. 20 out of 24 stars is pretty good for now. I think I can 3 star the remaining sections once I get Genshi. More exploration grinding with Wasaju. Believe me, I can do all the overworld stuff on my own just fine. He's just saving me time. I died during this world quest, which was completely avoidable if I just went to a tower to heal fully instead of being lazy. I managed to scrape by with just a hair. Then surprise, round two. Add two more deaths to the counter. Two hours later, Woming Bay is now 100% done as well. The next day, I did all the available side quests in Mount Firminent before I started exploring it. These turtles were vibing after we finished, so I went to equip the shiny version, but I guess I took too long and they left me. Tell truth from facade. Then I fought Jue for the weekly boss materials. I have no idea what happened here. I think my ultimate hit Jue midair with everything and it just completely broke the stagger bar so they were knocked down instantly. I'll take it. I think Jue is the easiest boss fight I've 
done so far because they're not as fast and nimble as the others. I do decent damage to it even before it is knocked down. I can almost disregard dodging and face tank their tail swipes because it just doesn't do that much damage. Maybe the max level one will change my mind. Rolled on two echoes and ooh, that crit damage Jue Echo looking nice. My crit rate Jue Echo, not as much, but it could be worse. Did a big farming round two, baby. Don't worry, I'll skim through it since I have high chances of getting golds. This is definitely the second to last time I'll fight the Dreamless and Damn, I got clapped. I probably should fight at a lower difficulty, but I'm too stubborn. Nope, we're not falling for that move twice. Or that one. Hopefully, this is the last time we'll ever have to fight each other, Abomination. I now have a gold for every echo in the game and a maxed out databank. Okay, is dying to random shockwaves the new meta now? Damn, these new Mount Ferminant enemies are no joke. I wasn't expecting them to hit that hard. I came across a random shiny light crusher a fine addition to my collection. I really gotta stop not taking advantage of the free endless healing the game gives us. Finally onto the last underground section and why is there a red aura ice cube? Really? I probably could have ignored it, but look how annoying this enemy is with its constant jumping attacks. Fortunately, with more defeat, chipping away and dodging said jumping attacks is more manageable. Thank God for Bellborn reducing damage taken. And I don't want to hear any complaints about me using a healing food item mid-fight that was never stated in the rules. With this chest and these wind chimers delivered, I have 100%ed after 3 hours to show my dedication to Jinshi. Now I can finally get her. Then I tried for the weapon banner and got nothing in 50 pools. Yeah, can't say I'm surprised. Luckily, we're getting a free 10 pull for weapon banner in three days, and I still have three regions of the map left to fully explore. I got this. I can do this. Plus, the Dreams Ablaze and Darkness event gives us enough for a 10 roll for completing all the asteroid missions and everything up till difficulty 4. The core gameplay is the same as last update, but they added a grading system during combat. The more you build it up by attacking and dodging, the higher the rank and the more buffed you become. It's insane how good Trial Jinshi is, even without all these fancy buffs. It's making me feel a little better that all the FTP grinding pain wasn't for nothing. One last death for the counter of this video. I get what I deserve thinking spamming the Echo skill and nothing else in difficulty 4 against Scar would somehow win. No, it's still not enough. Another 60 pity in why gotcha gods. Nothing of note for exploring the winning angst mire region. I haven't leveled her skills yet, but I gave Jinshi maxed out Echo's and Jian's old 4 star weapon. I gotta make her work for her weapon. It's also just nice having a full team now. After another 3.5 hours, the final Tenro gives us her signature weapon. Finally, inner peace. Now what? As of recording this, I'm Union level 52, so I've been upgrading my characters more to prepare for Tower of Adversity and the Hologram Challenges. I also use the free 5 star standard weapon selector for the gun. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more challenge content. Appreciate if you drop a like for the series. I'm Dragon Lolita, and until then, on to my next video.